You will always hear some of the most successful people in the world say that they got to where they are by putting in 115 hour work weeks, saying that you need to work like hell. But if you study math, then subconsciously, you'll know that actually when it comes to math, pushing to do more and more hours with your head in the book very quickly yields diminishing returns. And actually, if you go too far, then math burnout is one of the hardest places to pull yourself out of. And it's not an issue of self-control. G.H. Hardy famously said that four hours of creative work a day is about the limit for a mathematician. Now, I know he was addicted to cricket, but four hours, seriously? Most people can push themselves way past four hours if they had to. But is there any point in doing so if your brain isn't in a state to engage with difficult abstract concepts? There's something I can't put my finger on about the demands that math puts on your brain that makes genuine improvement with the amount of hours you put in have this very complex counterintuitive relationship. I want to find out what is the optimum number of hours you should be putting in every day if you want to get better as fast as possible over the span of a week, a year, or your whole life. Well, I'm going to be speaking to mathematicians at Cambridge to find this out from some of the most seasoned studiers out there. But first I want to see how much math can you actually learn in one day if you just push yourself way past the four hours recommended by the likes of Hardy and Poincaré. I've been putting in some serious shifts recently to finish up a book for a review that I've been promising for a while now. And on this particular day, I decided I was going to push hard, completely ignoring what my brain was telling me. And at the end of every hour, I would write down how much I actually read or solved in that hour. The first couple hours were great. I was really engaged and taking my time to think hard about every sentence I was reading. Both of these hours, I read six pages each. It doesn't sound like a lot, but there was a lot going on in my brain for these two hours. But then coming into the third and fourth hour, it was taking me longer to give the ideas the same amount of scrutiny and care I had been giving them. And because of this, I felt like I was becoming less engaged and much more willing to just skip over things and not think about things like edge cases. Then in the fifth hour, just before lunch, at this point Hardy's already done, <laughs> I switched from reading to solving exercises. And yeah, I was going at snail's pace. I knew that I could do these problems three or four times faster if I was doing them with fresh eyes. It's strange, every step every thought had a lot of like mental friction is the best way to describe it almost like half my neurons had shut down <laughs> or maybe they were just hungry i was glad when lunch came to be honest <laughs> but then after lunch i did feel a bit faster again and i carried on solving problems the goal was to finish two chapters worth of exercises but it really didn't take long until that friction came back again and in total it took me three hours to finish these but then after this i just couldn't go back to the same book I had to do something different. So for the last couple hours, I got Gauss to build me a mini course diving into the role of finite fields in combinatorics. I got out two more hours of learning and solving problems before making the call to end the day there. So 10 hours in total, I was a little disappointed to be honest. I was aiming for 15 because 15 hour days have been a pretty common occurrence since people have started watching the channel. But even if my brain is on the floor, I can still push and learn another trick in the 3D modeling software or build out a new feature on MathHub. But with math, I could have sat there in front of the book for more hours at the end of the day but nothing would have happened. So what should you do to get good as quickly as possible? Well, it's time to speak to a veteran. This guy is the most ambitious aspiring mathematician I know, and he's just finished his undergrad achieving first class honors. So he's sure got a lot of hours under his belt. I think that um, maths is interesting in the sense that developing as a mathematician is not up to have as much control over as you think. And, uh, you know, Hardy the famously said, you know, the four hour thing is that you can only do four hours of productive maths a day. And I, I don't think it's always true, but I think it is true that like there, it, it, there's a smaller number of hours available to benefit from doing maths than in other pursuits, which is why it's very important more than anything to show up every day. Rushing to do a deadline doesn't really bent, make you mature as much as a mathematician as just trying to do thinking about maths basically every day. And it's a sort of like it's like building up that muscle, right, of thinking like a mathematician. And it's not something you can rush. It's not something you can like it's very, very painful to try and do it all at the last minute. Kind of like going to the gym. There's no other option other than to go to the gym consistently. And I think there's no reason to see maths any differently. But I can imagine that your days probably looked quite different leading up to your finals you've just done, right? So what does a typical day look like when you're locked in? Uh, yeah, there was a constant tension throughout. I think in terms of like daily schedule, I'd be say reviewing one or two lectures. And that would maybe take about two hours or three hours. So sort of reviewing the content, 
you know, rewriting it out, making sure I understand the arguments. What if I change this condition or that condition or that kind of thing? Maybe I'd have lunch at this point or I, I, tr I work for a bit longer. I transition more towards like solving problems in the afternoon. And then I think once I'd solved the problems, I'd sort of be done. Um, so overall, I'd say a good day could be, could be maybe five hours or six hours, a bad day, eight to 10. I think the thing that's difficult though, is that you sort of have to do that every day. And especially at Cambridge, there's no um, real concept of the weekend. So you're basically working seven days a week. Hi, interesting. But I'm sure it happens a lot that your brain isn't in a position to function that well mathematically. So how do you deal with that when you're also trying to push yourself every day? Yeah, so I think it's very important to understand like the pattern of your span throughout the day. So I would always do Anki reviews with my like morning coffee because Anki is a very like high dopamine activity, right? So you have very small flashcards that you sort of look at in quick succession and you want to answer as many of them as fast as possible. So definitely I think it's, yeah, that it massively fluctuates, that it's not consistent, but you can always structure your day in such a way that you're working optimally. Okay, now of course this depends on the person, but if I had to force you to choose a number, which is going to be the number of hours you spend doing maths every day for the next year, with the goal of getting as good as possible, what do you think? Uh, I think I'd be happy with like a six hour day. And, and that six hours of doing everything from the like shallowest work up to like solving problems, um, I think that's basically good if you can maintain six hours. It's very much a circumstance. It's, it's an individual thing as well. You have so many like days you can push through available in your brain before you start to burn out, right? I guess that's what I realized. Like, earlier on, I glamorized the whole pushing through thing. And then eventually, though, it was very difficult to do that. And um, the productivity close to the exams was, was very bad when it could have been better. Having been around Varen and lots of other high achieving mathematicians for the last few years, I've noticed that what they all have in common is an ability to listen to their brains and adapt accordingly so that they can turn up every day and be consistent. It's the main thing, it's just consistency. But they all also have a great ability to really push it and for a few weeks, when it counts the most, they work like hell. 